Hello everyone. Now we know how to balance simple equations by inspection or by trial and error method. But what about complex equations? Here we can make use of algebra that we have learnt. Talking about chemical reactions, we are constantly breaking or producing molecules every second. Through respiration in our body, oxygen changes into carbon dioxide. So our body cells are burning foods and producing carbon dioxide. Thus chemical reactions are going on inside our body around us all the time. So these chemical reactions keep us alive. Like here this is reaction which happens during respiration inside the cells. It's the source of energy that keeps us alive. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide plus water with the release of energy. This reaction has more complex compounds like this big organic compound glucose C6H12O6 which is the formula for glucose. But if you see, this equation is not balanced. Number of carbon atoms on the left side is 6. On right, it is 1. Number of hydrogen atoms on the left side is 12. On the right side, it is 2. Coming to oxygen atoms, the number is 8 on the left hand side and it is equal to 3 on the right side. So, this is not balanced equation. If we go element by element and try to balance the number of atoms on the both sides, it could be hard. So we can do pure math to find the coefficients rather than taking elements one by one. So to balance a chemical reaction algebraically, we start by putting unknown coefficients in front of each molecular entity in the equation. Say a number of molecules of glucose react with B number of molecules of oxygen and C number of molecules of carbon dioxide and D molecules of water are produced. We already know when the equation is balanced, the number of atoms are same on both sides of the equation. So here if we see the left hand side has 6A number of carbon atoms and this is equal to C carbon atoms on the right hand side. Correct? Next, the left hand side has 12A hydrogen atoms and this is equal to 2D hydrogen atoms which we get from the water molecules. So simplifying that is dividing both the sides by 2 we get 6A is equal to D. Lastly, coming to oxygen molecules. Left hand side has 6A oxygen atoms from glucose and 2B from oxygen molecule. On the RHS, 2C oxygen atoms are there from the carbon dioxide molecule and we have D from water. Now, to balance the equation, both the RHS and the LHS should be equal. As the number of atoms are same on both the sides, we can say 6A plus 2B is equal to 2C plus D. Now while solving, we should start from the biggest molecule. Now let's take A is equal to 1. So 6A becomes 6 multiplied by 1 which is equal to 6. To match the LHS and the RHS we have C is equal to 6A. So we can say C is equal to 6. Now D is equal to 6A. But A's value is equal to 1. So D is equal to 6 into 1 which is equal to 6. Thus we get D is equal to 6. Now let's put the values in the equation for oxygen. 
a equal to 1, c equal to 6 and d is equal to 6. Now we can easily get the value of b. So we balance the equation using the algebraic method. So we can assign weights to the molecules and can find the relation between them. We generally start by assuming smallest value for the weights assigned to the biggest molecule. Hence we started here with glucose molecule. While calculating if the value of any coefficient comes out to be a fraction then we should look for another higher value because a molecule cannot be in fraction. We need to take a new value and start over again until we get some whole number for all the weights that is for all the coefficients. So don't worry generally you would find all the values with 2-3 trials. So that was all about balancing the equation using the algebraic method. That's all for now. Bye-bye.